I'm Arun Gudino, Deputy Editor at Gulf Business. And I would like to extend a very warm welcome to many of you who have, pre who have chosen to be here today with us for the special edition of Gulf Business Talks. Today, we're going to talk about luxury It was valued at about 500 billion. That figure is expected to rise to $733 billion by 2026, growing at a compound annual growth rate of 5.2% in 2019, right after 2026. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has slammed the brakes for nearly the entire sort of luxury industry across the world, but more so even for the auto industry. Major manufacturers from around the world have had to temporarily stop production, and a few of them have had to even rethink what they're doing and how they're doing. But it hasn't been all doom and gloom. Many of the manufacturers have even chosen to launch cars despite the pandemic. Then it has also meant that manufacturers have responded by shifting many of them, it means bringing forward their strategies that would otherwise take three to five years to materialize that's now being brought to the present. For, other, for, for many others, we've rethought the, the, the sort of fleet that they had, so probably hybrids and electric. Well, to discuss the state of the luxury auto industry and also the future direction for it in these challenging times, I have with me two very special panelists. Allow me to introduce, the, uh, to introduce them to you. We have Peter Rawlinson, the CEO and CTO at Lucid Motors. Lucid Motors is a really exciting luxury, electric luxury car manufacturer from California, which is backed by none other than Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, the Sovereign Wealth Fund. Rawlinson is a familiar face uh, in the electric car industry. You'll also remember him as the chief engineer of the Tesla model. Our second panelist is Memdu Khairala. General Manager of AGMC Rolls-Royce Motorcars here in Paris. Rolls-Royce is arguably one of the finest luxury auto manufacturers in the world. And they recently launched the new Coast Line as well. Uh, the next time you see a Rolls-Royce cruising down Sheikh Zad Road here in Dubai, know fully well that Miamdu and his team have probably played a small part in helping that customer create a bespoke Rolls-Royce. Well, that's the introduction to our panel. But before we begin the discussion, uh, a quick reminder of the format and the facilities we have. During the session, please feel free to post any questions you have on the Q&A feature uh, or the chat feature on your screen. We will try to address them during the discussion. We also have time for a brief Q&A at the end of the session, so the last 10 minutes of the session. In the meanwhile, please follow us on social media at Cult Business on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and at Gulf Business Magazine on Instagram. We are live streaming this on Facebook. So if you have any further questions, please post them there and we will. And with that, we now begin. to let me address my first question to you. How simple is that? industry been impacted by the COVID-19 crisis? Of course, I mean, thanks for the introduction, first of all, and uh, thanks uh, to be with, uh, with us. And uh, I really appreciate the invitation. As I explained to you off, uh, offline, that uh, it's the first uh, webinar I have uh, of that form. Uh, and of course, thanks to pandemic situation to put us all in the new era of communicating via virtual uh, communication. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, the pandemic situation we have right now and the impact on the luxury segment, uh, I would say uh, that uh, it, the, the pandemic situation has forced us, forced us to uh, innovate and create new ways of communication back to our customers. And with that, we survived over the last few months. And uh, it's not a secret that my July this year is much better than July 2019 and even 2018. So we did much better job uh, in this year than uh, the previous year and the year before. I'm talking about volume of sales in July. So uh, 
I like what happens in the mid segment. I like what happens in the mid range of cars, which is obviously being affected dramatically with the volume sales due to obvious reason. In the luxury segment, the situation is different. And in UAE in particularly, we have that, uh, what we call it, uh, the, the proper infrastructure in the country to allow people to drive and enjoy Rolls Royce car uh, in, in, in a very comfortable way. Uh, with that in, in mind, uh, our impact, the impact of the pandemic on us, uh, I, will con I will consider it as minimal uh, when it comes to the, uh, uh, the volume sale. Uh, of course, there is a, a, an impact on the customer footfall in the showrooms, but we come over that by many initiatives, which I'll explain later to you. Uh, if you, I mean, uh, I would not say that uh, the same impact happened in automotive came to the luxury Rolls Royce in UAE as it is in where else in the world in automotive industry. So from our perspective, what we see, it's a new way, new challenges, but our numbers did not affect it badly like others in the same automotive industry. In the luxury segment, the impact is minimal due to the fact that many of our customers right now is not traveling. And we have more time with many of our customers than ever because their schedule used to be very busy. They are all the time abroad. They are all the time traveling. They are all the time where else. Nowadays, we have more time to, to talk to us and uh, they find a new way to reward themselves by owning a new Rolls Royce or changing a Rolls Royce we have with a new one. So this is what we are going through right now. Right. Peter, let me bring you into the conversation here. Uh, Lucid Motors is based out of the US, a market that has been, let's face it, rocked by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, what's your reading on, on, on how severely the industry has been impacted by it? Well, first of all, speaking for Lucid, we don't yet have our first product in mass production. So we have a degree of immunity. Uh, we've had to re-imagine um, the way the design and engineering team and the factory build-out could be um, uh, kept on track during the, the course of the pandemic. Our factory hasn't skipped a beat. We're up absolutely on track. We've got cars actually in pilot build at that factory now. We've achieved that in nine months, which is a world record. Um, we have been dependent upon suppliers. Some of the suppliers have incurred delays. And as a consequence, we've put our start of production back into spring of 21 for our first car, the Lucid Air. So Lucid Air is going to go into production spring 21 instead of really late in, in 20. Um, but I think, you know, I, I, I think there's a, it's a new world, isn't it? 2020. And I think we've seen a few things as observers of this space. I think there is a renewed interest in the sanctity and comfort and safety of having one's own car rather than ride sharing and using public transport. I think the other thing that we recognize is how rapidly the environment's returning to uh, a, a better health uh, as man's footprint has lightened. It's remarkable how the skies are clearer, the waters are clearer uh, with just the impact of COVID. And if anything, there is a salutary a portent of the value of mankind moving to sustainable mobility. So I think the future is more cars will be purchased rather than ride share and shared mobility. And I think that there will be a growing demand for sustainable battery electric cars. So I think that both those are salutary takeaways from this what, what otherwise has been a tragic uh, piece of events this year are, uh, are very positive for a company like us. Uh, I'm just going to pick up from your point about electric cars. Uh, the world's most valuable car maker today is an electric car manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, that segment, uh, and, 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 I, and I know it's, it's, it's a company that you've been previously associated with, uh, but the electric segment is expected to register the highest uh, compounding annual growth rate 
of 9.7 percent from 2019 up to 2026. That's major growth over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the challenges that electric car manufacturers will have to comprehend with in order to break through that barrier to become relevant, to become affordable, to sort of really get out there? Well, well, the first one's range anxiety. And I think with Lucid Air, we've achieved a 517 mile range, which is unheard of, unprecedented. And we can put that one to bed, range anxiety, we can replace with range confidence. And that is interlinked with the maturity of uh, a fast charge station uh, network. And we're partnering with Electrify America right across the US. So I think we can put that one to bed. I think the big challenge is the the price of purchase of an electric car compared with its gasoline counterpart. And we need a, a, to recognize that to address this, we need to address it with the technology in the cars. Um, that is the number one lever that we can pull. There's purchasing power, there's specifications of cars, there's evolution in many other systems. But let me tell you, the biggest area where the price point of electric cars is going to be influenced is in two areas battery technology and efficiency global efficiency of the complete system because the price point of an electric car is dominated by the size of the battery pack to achieve a certain range and there is a myopia about battery prices and i i i i i i don't I don't go with this. I do not subscribe to just looking at battery prices in terms of dollars per kilowatt hour. What really matters is the price point of achieving an electric car with a given range. Is it a 200 mile a range electric car? Is it a 250 mile range electric car? So it's cost per mile of range, dollars per mile that matters. And that is a quotient. It's, and the numerator is dollars per kilowatt hour at battery level and the denominator is the efficiency how far can you go per kilowatt hour how many miles can you get per kilowatt hour and that's where lucid's extraordinary efficiency technology is going to have a profound effect on the industry not just in terms of um attenuating range anxiety but absolute range today as we're seeing with over 500 mile range product but in the future we can make electric cars with effectively a breakthrough of 20% cost saving on battery level because we're 17% more efficient in terms of the way we use that battery energy. Okay. Uh, Memble, I'm going to bring you in here. Uh, the CEO of Rolls Royce uh, has said that, you know, before the end of the decade, we will see an electric Rolls Royce. And that's quite a big statement for legacy car manufacturers that have been around for in this case, a 116 year old company. Uh, but there is a definite push to slowly pull away from combustion engines and into an electric future within the luxury auto segment, isn't there? See, this is exactly what we have, we have just mentioned right now. The future is electric cars, no matter what you do. This is where the future stays. And the internal combustion engines will not sustain the future, especially the Rolls Royce selected or elected to do the most efficient and the most powerful engines for our cars. We don't build engines in six cylinders or eight cylinders. We choose to stay with the largest, largest 12 cylinder engine, the 6.7 liter engine in our cars. So all our cars enjoy only the 12 cylinder for obvious reason that we give our customer the effortless and the most uh, luxurious ride in our cars in modern range. Uh, but having said that, we also realized and we also agree that we cannot stop the, 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 the clock to, to move. And the future is with the electric cars. Rolls-Royce uh, is a part of that. There is no denying of that. Our engineers are busy right now uh, to work on the future electric cars. We don't have as a dealer here in Dubai much information about that, what exactly will be uh, yet. When Rolls Royce gave the concept uh, 103 EX, it was giving an idea for the people about how the Rolls Royce uh, future car will be. And still, Rolls Royce will keep the heritage of the most luxurious, whether it's an electric car or internal combustion engine car. 
we will stay in the most materials cars product no matter what we do. If you look and if you visit our factory, the three pillars of the car over there will be almost about the craftsmanship, about how details we are getting. So it's the paint, the leather, the wood. These are the three areas where the people are doing the most uh, uh, efforts to create uh, the experience of the craftsmanship. So if it's the paint, we carry the most number of paint in any factory in the world compared to our product volume. We carry the most choices of variety of paint. We go in a very, very different level when it comes to the paint quality and what we can do with the paint. When it comes to the wood, the inlay, the, the, the material of the wood, what we can do with the wood, and now what we can do even with the carbon fiber or the modern is another school. When it comes to the leather, we choose the best quality of leather ever in, in, in automotive industry. Along with that, we do the embroidery with the special people who can literally do any dream pictures over the wood, over the leather. So Rolls Royce has almost been in that area of building the most luxurious cars. The power was given. The power was something which stays in the 12 cylinder engines. So if we move to the electric car, that will never affect Rolls Royce style to keep the car in the most luxurious level in no matter what is the powertrain exists in the car. Right, uh, so electric without compromising luxury. Um, well, when it comes to electric cars, Peter, um, I know, for example, and, and we said this during the introduction, where Saudi's PIF has backed uh, Lucid Motors. Now, this is the sovereign wealth fund of a country. This is, this is a huge deal for a country to say, listen, we're putting a sovereign wealth fund behind an electric future. Um, what does that say for other governments around the world? I mean, you know, are they late to the party or, you know? Well, is, I, is, I, think it's, I think it's a testament to the vision of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The, uh, it's a testament to the vision of the Public Investment Fund that they've had the foresight to invest in the future. And not just the future of mobility, but the future of energy, of energy use. We recognize that the oil will not be there forever. And, and, and this is a very shrewd move on the chessboard for them. Uh, they're long-term strategic partners of ours. They're not in for short-term financial gain. We have a clear vision, a 10-year plan, where we're gonna be huge over the next decade. At least it's not gonna just operate in a niche segment of, 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 of we're starting with lu true luxury. We want to occupy that space, but we want to make um, electric mobility more attainable. And really, um, together with the Public Investment Fund, we have a great strategy, which we're currently implementing. We're we'll at the first step of that strategy right now, completing uh, the phase one of our factory in Arizona. Um, and this is a long-term partnership for the kingdom and for the Public Investment Fund. I'm going to talk to you about the China market, um, and I'm going to direct this question to Mendo. Uh, well, the China market is, is a very important one for the luxury auto industry, but um, it has, and thankfully, it has bucked the trend with combined to other markets in, say, Europe or, or in North America. Do you think China can single-handedly wave the flag and be the torchbearer for the industry over the next 12 to 18 months as, as the pandemic, as the effect of the pandemic begins to win? Mendo? No, Varun, it is, it, that's not necessarily. I mean, China market is one of the most important market for Rolls Royce, that's no doubt. Uh, China as well is being one of those countries who been uh, a, a lesson to everybody how they handle the pandemic situation in their country. Having said that, Rolls Royce if, uh, activity right now is going very well around the world. I mean, the US market is picking up the, the new ghost, as you explained at the beginning. We, Rolls Royce, did not stop the launch of the most important successful car uh, in this year. Yes, the, the, the shifted the, uh, the, 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 the launch of the car a couple of months, but at the end of the day, the car came to the people and the, the perception of the car is fantastic. Our tank of order is building up. And that's not the case only in UAE. That's the case around the Middle East as well as 
in the in USA. So I will not see the Chinese market as single hand to take the business forward. The Rolls Royce make sure all the time that the distribution of the work is going around the world. Uh, the, the way we are handling the business with our customer is more one one. This is the style of the business we do. So we have a very close relationship uh, to our customer. We have a fantastic platform now uh, called Whispers, where we are talking to our customers around the world. So we are not acting as Rolls Royce in a specific market, in a specific way. We act around the globe in a different way, match with the market needs, create the one-to-one -one interaction with the customer most of the time. Our customer is a family for us. We deal with them all the time. We didn't lose much of them uh, through the pandemic. Thank God for that. And uh, China will not be single hand taking the business forward. That's that's very that's something for sure will not be the case. China will be stay as an important market, but USA, USA Middle East, uh, Europe still doing well, very well, especially with the new boss coming and with the success we have in the previous model as well. The Colonel, the the the, the race is still doing well, the drone is still doing well, the Phantom surprisingly being taken up nowadays in a very strong way again. So I don't see China as the single hand taking the business forward. It will be still as Rolls Royce globally uh, movement around the world. Peter, do you agree that China may not necessarily be the single biggest focus for the luxury auto industry or does not need to be the single biggest focus for the luxury auto industry? It doesn't need to be, but I think that for us, it's the grand prize. We're going to take uh, Lucid Air into China in um, late 22, uh, and, and we're going to get, prepare our executive seats package for that. Um, to me, that's the, the, the great untapped market. I mean, we're going into luxury EV space. No one, no one else, no other companies in that space. And we've got a car which is just perfect for China because we've got uh, executive rear seats with a 55 degree recline, which are like aircraft inspired seats um, as an option, which we're going to introduce and then go into the China market with that version of the car. I think that's going to be huge. Right. And, and staying with you, Peter, uh, the US president has confronted China in a very direct way uh, that might pose problems for many industries that plan to do business there. Uh, you are a US based company. Um, are you worried that the trade conflicts could mean that China could become a difficult market or a tougher market to penetrate as a result of these US China? Tension, pay attention. Well, let, let, let's see what happens three three weeks time, in twenty days time. There's a uh, there could be a seismic shift in in relationships. Let's watch that space. Uh, right. What we need what we need are policies which encourage encourage uh, the transition to sustainable mobility. All the world needs that, and whatever nation we're from, this is something which should should transcend politics. There's irrefutable evidence about global warming, and we need to address that internationally. And electric cars are not the answer for that, but they're a big part of that answer. And with other solutions being implemented, and that's what the world needs desperately right now. So, you know, what we're trying to do is provide a solution which truly transcends politics high-tech electric cars with technology which can transfer down to more affordable echelons and make um, the electric car much more affordable and accessible for the masses. And I think that's got to resonate both in the US and in China. So common sense will surely prevail. Um, moving from China to here, right here in the Middle East, uh, Memdu, this question is for you. Uh, Middle East, is, of course, a uh, very, very important market for the luxury or the sector. What must luxury car companies realize and keep in mind when trying to make inroads and tap a further customer base, a local customer base here within the region? Uh, first of all, you need to, 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 to understand, Barun, that when we deal with the luxury of Rolls Royce, you have the, you have the product and you have the customer. 
and you need to equally treat both with the same importance because at the end of the day without the proper customer you will not have access to sell the products so we must maintain our customer data in a completely different way because knowing the customer understand the customer needs is the key to keep that relationship ongoing with the customer selling the luxury segment is not at all as selling commodity it's emotional it's something which we have uh, to to do it in a different way we in uae in dubai we be number one in the world when it comes to bespoke and to to achieve that that's only happening with that kind of relationship you build with the customer because this work more of like building to order you build the car to certain customer with his certain needs certain colors precise interiors and leather and emotional memories it be it be stars of this day of birth or the picture of what his son or family to be in the car or the signature initiative of of the company so it's all emotional and to do that you need to build the relationship all the way with the customer all the time so in rolls royce the the system we are dealing with is having that kind of intelligence to bring to the executives what need to be do what need, what need to happen the context the follow up when it will be how it will be of course that happens hand in hand with the personal touch because we build our relationship with the customer on personal level so keep treating the customer with that importance bring us always with the success to maintain the relationship to the future so the luxury segment will always need that kind of personal touch yes on those days we have came to a new era of communicating with the customer virtually trying to send things over the uh, not the email most of the time maybe the whatsapp or whatever the other solutions to communicate to the customer but at the end of the day that personal touch need to happen that one to one communication need to happen and that's the key of the success for the future in the luxury segment in my opinion uh, Peter, about when it comes to rolling out here in the middle east i'm sure that our brand plans um, what about what about could you talk us through some of the plans for the region of course saudi arabia what about the uae kuwait bahrain the other countries yeah 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 we well, we had uh, a, a massive response from the middle east region when we opened um, reservations for pre-orders for lucid air just a month or two ago uh, it was it was uh, overwhelming the the level of interest and excitement we want to make cars available certainly in the kingdom of saudi arabia right at the end before 21 is out and getting to the rest of the region super early in 22 i'm really excited uh, i think that um, lucid air is going to be uh, really hot in that region you know state of the art electric car incredible range as the, the highest technology in the world and that really resonates in that part of the world and it's coming it's coming it can't happen soon enough you, you, you know you know peter i'm going to stick with you because we we spoken about china and the middle east but what are some of the markets that are untapped that you think they could be the next big thing for the luxury auto sector globally in the next 3 5 7 10 years oh gosh i i i i i mean the, the it's um there are limitless possibilities if you look at the luxury sector today all the luxury cars in the world have one thing in common and that is they're all gasoline powered there is not a true luxury electric vehicle available from any manufacturer currently so who knows what markets can be penetrated with suddenly the advent and availability internationally of a true luxury car which is pure battery electric with absolute top technology the sky is the limit uh we've talked about traditional uh markets one is going to be huge we're starting in the US in 21 that's going to as our home market coming to europe middle east 22 into china um I think this is this car's going to be loved all around the world. Who knows where? Ma'am, I'm going to bring you in here. Well, businesses have used time to talk about 
building resilience, future proofing themselves in some sort of way. Uh, what does that mean in the context of a luxury manufacturer? Okay, the, the again, what I'm going back again to my same my same comment in the last question that the future is to stay in contact with your customers. The future is to make sure that you understand your customer needs. The movement of the company is if, if we are going, let us say now that we are going to go for the electric car as Rolls Royce Group. If Rolls Royce is focusing on the electric car, without understanding the customer needs, without building the car with the customer wish, we will not be successful then. The key of success in the future right now for us is to stay, understand our customer need, then make the cars for our customer. As I said, if the, if the luxury car, Vita was talking about the most luxurious electric car, which is not exist now, because again, I mean, we have brand like Tesla doing a fantastic job when it comes to electric car, and those guys are doing the job in a very nice way. Yet we are not carrying the most luxurious, in my opinion, electric car yet. I, do, I don't know about Peter car yet. I'm not, I'm not very much familiar of what the car will be. However, he said rightly that the, right now, nobody holds the best luxurious cars when it comes to electric. I, I can assure you, if Rolls Royce come to that field, you will find the most luxurious cars ever built by Rolls Royce. This is how it is because Simply, this is what we used to do over the 116 years. We built the most luxurious cars for our customer. We are the most understanding of the bespoke element, how we can play around the bespoke. We don't build the cars in our opinion only. We build the cars in the customer opinion. We respect everybody test. We try to do the, the, big, the best quality in every single car we build. Having said that, yet, looking forward to the future is going to be based on understand the customer needs, build the car, match with our mindset of our niche customer expectation. Digital transformation, now that's a term that's banged around quite a bit. Um, what does it mean in the context of the game, the luxury of industry? Will that mean maybe, you know, a, a, a lower footprint of boutiques and a greater footprint of, of maybe an e-commerce reach, or how does that kind of translate into the luxury auto industry? Okay, you know the boutique was initiative of AGMC here in Dubai, our dealer in Dubai. That initiative we built up, we started in 2015 with the cooperation of uh, the Middle East office along with the, the colleagues back in Woodwood. So we built that we, and it saw the light in 2016. Rolls Royce today have two ways of putting the cars to our customer either a normal showroom or a boutique. So that tells you how the boutique was so successful to Rolls Royce as an idea. Today, the boutique is building the, the luxury feeling to the customer, not necessarily on the car. It will be also with affinity partners from, you can name it, whether it's a jewelry, whether a watchmaker, whether it's a carpet maker, whatever. It's, whatever is luxury, whatever is classified as the best niche luxury in a certain area, you can find it in the boutique with us in, the, in Dubai. Having said that, the future dictates on us right now that we need to find ways to communicate with our customer. Before, if I would say that to close the deal with the customer, we need five, six visits with the customer. Now it's down to one or two visits. The rest is happening, happening virtually. We send video files to the customer, we send colors, combinations, we share with the customer online sometimes the configuration of the car, but the final decision still today to happen in one of one. And we learned out of the, the, the new ghost uh, launch. We have done something new here in Dubai and with the help of the regional office, as an example, we invite the customer where the car was already existing Goodwood in the closed room and there is a closed room event where we cannot take pictures of the car. For the first time ever, we brought a video very secured in the closed room back in the Middle East office and we start to invite customers one of one session to see the video of the new car before anybody else. And the impact of that was amazing. We have people from the factory online with us 
at the same time with the customer was sitting with us and those engineers was explaining to the customer what is going on and what, what is the new ghost all about. That for us was the first time to happen. And the, the perception and the, the customer feedback was amazing. Because for the first time now, we learned that spending more time with one -on one customer was much beneficial than having an event in a hotel where you invite 100 or 200 people and you literally can spend maximum of one or two minutes with each customer. When we have that one -on one session, we have enough time to discuss what happened, what is, what is happening right now, and what is the future of the customer. It was an eye-opening for us that the new style of the virtual actually work hand in hand with the one-to-one -one session with the customer in the best way we could imagine. So this is a new way forward. You need to keep the customer in loop of communication virtually, but at the end, the one-to-one -one session face-to-face -face is a must to close the deal and get things done. Peter, let me get your thoughts on digital transformation. You're starting from a clean slate. Will it, be, will it be a big push? I know you've got a, a, a recent uh, showroom in Beverly Hills. What will be the sort of future of retail for the luxury auto industry? Well, there's, there's multi-levels to digital transformation. First of all, Lucid, we're as much a software house as a, a mechanical engineering uh, outfit. We've got 300 software engineers. Our car will be state of the art in terms of its digital capability. Uh, it's 12 volt architectures based upon a gigabit um, uh, loop, uh, an ethernet loop. No one else has got that technology. Super connected, super upgradable with very advanced um, driving features and autonomous driving sensor suite, including LiDAR. Um, the digital sales is a huge part of our strategy. And we've actually got an online configurator, a digital configurator for our product, which is the most advanced of any car company out there. No other car company, BMW, Mercedes, Porsche, Jaguar, Lexus, even Rolls-Royce, hasn't got the level of conf digital configurator that we've got. Um, it, it, it places the car in a moving environment, a three-dimensional virtual environment. Go online, check out our configurator. Audi can't even get close to this. It's state of the art and it's the future. Now, um, in terms of our retail strategy, it sort of moves on to that. I still believe, paradoxically, there is, even in this digital internet super connected environment, there's still place for bricks and mortar. Uh, so we're owning all our stores and I completely agree with Mamdu's hypothesis that that personal interaction is crucial in the luxury space. We want to contain and control that. That's why we haven't got dealerships. We're not gonna have dealerships. We can't entrust something as important, as interpersonal, as our relationship with our future customers to a third party. So we're gonna have fewer stores. I believe less is more. We're gonna have them in aspirational, super cool locations. We're going to have ultra cool architecture in those stores. We've just opened our second store in Beverly Hills, just along from Rodeo Drive. It was formerly the Rolls Royce dealership. So, um, so it's got a very illustrious history. Um, and we're very proud that it's got that heritage there in that building in Beverly Hills. Please check it out because you see um, the sort of mid century modern inspired California architecture. And you see the car in that architectural setting. It's like hand in glove, the car and the cool environment. There's a multiplier effect. And that really resonates with our customers. I'm going to stay with you. Uh, the SUV segment, that's something we haven't spoken up, spoken about. Yeah. And, um, of course, Lucid Gravity plans for that have been already announced. But um, of course, the SUV segment is one of the fastest growing segments of four yes. For, for, for the luxury auto car industry as well. What are your plans for this and, and sort of how do you see this particular segment mushrooming over the next three to five years? Yeah, undeniably. Well, first of all, many people were surprised we didn't start with an SUV. I wanted us to start with a car and be a car company, uh, first and foremost. And if you look at the, the value of miniaturization of our technology, which is a core, a, a central tenet of our whole architecture of the platform, 
works more profoundly with the spatial limitations of a sedan rather than SUV where inherently you've got more space in the first place. So um, it's un undeniable that um, the SUV market is burgeoning. I mean, even Rolls Royce has got a, a great SUV uh, and that, 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 that's quite a surprise to many. Uh, so absolutely, we're going to capture that space with the core tenets, incredible performance, incredible technology, unsurpassed range, miniaturization of the powertrain, and in giving the car incredible space and practicality, which is surprising for the size of the car. It's relatively easy to get a lot of space in a car by making the car huge on the outside. What we've got with Lucid Air, Lucid Air is smaller on the outside than a Porsche Taycan. And yet it's got more space than a long wheelbase S-Class Mercedes. And we're going to take that to a whole new level with Project Gravity with some other exciting features. So uh, I want to get that in production in Arizona spring 23, two years after the end. Memdu, Peter says that the Rolls-Royce SUV is, is, is a lovely vehicle. Uh, what about your thoughts on the, luxury, on the SUV segment and, and the prospects for its growth? So Peter said it's a great car. I agree with him. It's the greatest SUV on earth today. So <laughs> when it comes to SUV, you know, the Rolls Royce came to the SUV segment after a long time. Uh, in fact, uh, studying Rolls Royce history, you will find that Lawrence Larab, when he was driving a car across the desert, that was an SUV car in a way. And it's in the DNA of Rolls Royce to bring the car where it can take you everywhere. Uh, recently in Whispers, you can see a fantastic video for a new customer from UAE who took the car to the desert with a professional team to film that. And you can see the performance in the car over the dunes of sand uh, in an amazing way. The Rolls Royce style, when we come to a segment uh, as the SUV, again, there was no compromise in anything of the major columns or major pillars of Rolls Royce back to the customer. We, we promise our customer magic carpet ride, effortless, and the best craftsmanship when it comes to the product. And if you drive our SUV Colonel, you will find the following. It's the magic carpet ride, the best suspension you can ever imagine. The car feeling while you drive is amazing. It's effortless. The car, when you take the car on dunes, when you drive the car on road, it's amazing car to drive, very easy to control. And the craftsmanship is shouting in every corner in the car while you are riding it. So SUV of Rolls Royce will stay. It's now the most successful car in our uh, whole family of Rolls Royce. It's the best seller right now. We are always in short of supply from the factory on that car. Uh, Rolls Royce have enhanced that by adding the black badge colon in the beginning of this year. And again, it add more, uh, the, the, it add more as, an, uh, as an expectation for our customer because some people were looking for a like, little bit more uh, sporty look or um, different wheels or different caliber colors and that's what the uh, black badge does for them as an inquiry. So looking at SUV, SUV created on the colonel and that will be sustained in the future. If the electric car will be somewhere in the future of Rolls Royce, definitely the SUV will be part of that uh, change. Uh, I'm going to go into the uh, question and answers, but to all of you all watching, those who would like to propose a question, please do right now. Uh, but before that, just uh, another question while we wait for some of the uh, audience to ask these questions. Um, Mindu, what sort of a recovery pattern are we looking at? Is it going to be a V shape, a U shape, a W shape? I mean, there are, there are, there are various sort of uh, theories out there. What is your reading of the market? the luxury auto industry? If I look at the auto industry, I mean, in general, I don't see U-shape is coming. I don't, see, I don't see it as a U-shape because many other industry, which is the automotive industry, depends on right now, is still unknown when it would be recovered. I'm talking about the, 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 the air freight business, the traveling, the, the, the hotel industry, and all of those segments are affected dramatically right now. And majority of people working in that segment is our customer when it comes to automotive. 
So I don't see a U uh, shape of, uh, of, the, of the recovery on, on that case, simply because the pandemic still keep impacting back in a different way. I mean, we, the, the virus is still acting in, an, uh, in a different way. And if there is another wave, definitely the U will be turned to W or whatever the, 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 the situation will be. When it comes to the luxury segment, um, as long as the factory is still running, we are in the U shape, shape uh, the, the curve. If the factory, God forbid, again, for any reason will be shut down or whatever, guess what? We will go again to the W and how that W will be, I don't know. I mean, how, how many times it will be repeated, we don't know. So the future is very unclear to me because we are dealing with something which is nobody understand the dimension of when it will be ending and how it will be ending. Till today, we don't have a proper solution of the medical situation for in many areas. The traveling is, is difficult for many countries. And with that in hand, the economy of every country are now facing a lot of challenges. Yet our luxury segment is not affected dramatically like the all automotive industry, but the recovery, I don't see it at all as a U shape or V shape. It's definitely going to be in more of like W's all the way till things still settle when it comes to the virus activity in the world. Peter, do you agree? Well, I, I, I think we're asking the wrong question. I think this is a, a myopia about short termism. It doesn't matter whether it's a V shape or U shape. A lot of those car companies are going to be dead in 10 years because they're not adopting to electric fast enough. And there is an existential threat to their very existence and they can't even see it. And we're worried about whether it's a V shape or U shape. We, we, you know, it's a, we can worry about the academics of that, but there's a much bigger concern for those companies. They're going to be dead if they don't move to battery electric and get their act together fast because the clock is ticking. Seriously. Right. Um, I, I, we've got some questions here. I'm just going to read them out. Um, uh, Memdu, maybe you want to take this one. How important is the bespoke market here within the GCC? Uh, again, you see the, uh, the, the, the customer in the Middle East is different than any customer uh, where else in the world. And especially when it comes to the luxury segment, the customer, he needs things in, in, like, uh, in a different way. He, he wants to have the best. He wants to have something which is, belongs to his uh, heritage. He wants to implement uh, things of whatever the background of his. So we have calligraphy. We have uh, uh, people who love the desert. We have people who love the falcons. We have people who love the animals. So. We build cars around that most of the time. Even the car itself, when the customer choose the car here in the Middle East, uh, you will be surprised sometimes how the colors are coming together because of the nature of, uh, of uh, 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 the environment we live in. So people who, I mean, we found that people who've been uh, educated abroad came back here, still they have in their hearts the desert feeling, or if we are live by the sea in UAE, as an example, you are affected very much with the sea environment, and you want to see that in the, their car somehow. And that's what brings the bespoke as an important element when it comes to the, this part of the world. The bespoke is offered to everybody in Rolls Royce, uh, Rolls Royce factory. It's offered to everybody. Rolls Royce are treating our customer equally when it comes to the importance when it comes to bespoke. But definitely it's up to the dealership, the relationship you are building with your customer to understand their needs and bring them and let them understand that the, we have the capability to build the car, the car in that way, in the way they like. And that's why we've been very successful here in Dubai to build the cars, the cars to customers based on that bespoke elements which they need. We don't build cars bespoke. We tried that a couple of years ago to build a bespoke car and bring it over and then, then start to sell the car to the customer. That didn't go well because simply the customer didn't feel that that's his car. We built the car, but it's not his. What we have, what start to do from 2015 onwards, that we start to talk to the customer, take the wish list, 
see what we can do, build it together, and create the journey between building up the car till the delivery of the car as a bespoke. And that's where the success came. We are now, right now enjoying that kind of hand-in-hand -hand relationship with the customer to bring them to the bespoke dream at the end of the journey of the building the car. Thank you. Uh, Peter, I've got a question here uh, for you. Uh, it's coming. Well, there is a question about internships for Saudi nationals. Uh, bringing in Saudi nationals uh, very much into the mix of, of the auto luxury auto industry. Could you could you share some information about that? Yeah. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? I think that you know it's giving young Saudis the opportunity to experience cosmopolitan California and bring a little chunk of that back to their environment in the kingdom. We've had some great experiences with the internship program. We've had a a female uh, engineer as part of that, that internship, which has been great, a young car enthusiast. Um, and, 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 and there's a lot of goodwill generated and, 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 and the creme de la creme of those interns are, are invited to stay on and offer full-time jobs uh, in California at Lucid. Uh, so, you know, we, we like that sort of open exchange. I think it's, it's just another facet of the value that we're bringing and that the IF is bringing in partnership with us to the kingdom. Uh, there's a social uh, benefit here as well as an economical one. And I think that's profound for the long term and for this next generation. Right. We're going to take one more question uh, from, uh, one more question from our uh, audience. And this one is directed to Memdu. Uh, can you reveal what is the maximum amount that you have seen a customer spend on customization on a single car? <laughs> I, I, for some reason, I feel that was coming. I mean, <laughs> of course, <laughs> you see, you see uh, again, uh, first of all, let me comment on uh, Peter's uh, uh, opinion when it comes to the future of the car. I will answer the question and uh, uh, Peter is absolutely right. The future uh, is very much into the electric car and the car manufacturers right now need to act more fast when it comes to uh, bringing to life the electric car. I totally agree with that. Uh, now, when it comes to the, 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 the most expensive car ever built in, uh, in here, I would let me put it that way. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, we don't have a car, I used to use that phrase in my previous job with BMW, the full option car, there is a full option car. In Rolls Royce, there is no full option car. It doesn't exist. There is always, always something which you can do extra in Rolls Royce. You can have the spirit of ecstasy, the statue on the front of the engine hood and go, solid go. And we thought that that's the end of it. Now some customers came and they said, we need that in diamond. So it's a new level of like adding more. So there is nothing called that the sky or the limit have achieved in Rolls Royce building cars. The most expensive cars Rolls Royce have built was the swept tail, which is ab about $13 million. And when it comes to us, to our customer here in the Middle East, our most expensive Phantom was in the range of like 4 million dirhams. And if you ask me if that's the seal of the phantom, I can tell you, no, there is more can be added because I said, we have a one car which we built back in the factory where we crushed diamond on the paint. So the paint moved with the diamond. The price of that itself was almost 1.5 million dirhams. So the paint alone, and, and there is no limit or there is no sky uh, roof for the Rolls Royce when it comes to the most expensive car. I mean, it doesn't exist. It can be anything. Great, great. Thank you so much. Uh, we found common ground on which Peter and Mem do definitely agree. And on that note, uh, we must end. Well, thank you to both of you very much for a very insightful discussion. Um, with that, we now come to an end of today's virtual event. A big thank you to both of you and for all of you who have taken the time to join us here today. We hope you enjoyed this session and found it beneficial as well. Uh, you will be able to access the webinar on our website, lifebusiness.com. Do let us know your feedback and comments. 
thank you and have a great evening thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.